was I ambushed by anything? Yeah, I was. Um, I had, uh, it was, like I said, it was the third day that I hadn't gone to the beach. And I was really looking forward to going to the beach. But my wife needed me at 4, at 4 p.m. when I finished work. I was, getting, I was all ready to go. And she said, do you have some time? And it turned out that she needed me to help her with some stuff relative to her work. Uh, and um, it took, took about 30 minutes. By that time, I had missed the opportunity of sundown. And uh, so I, I didn't go to the beach. And <clears throat> in the moment while it was happening, while I was helping my wife, I could feel a, a, a frustration rising in me that, uh, darn it, I'm missing my third day in a row. I'm not going to go to the beach. And uh, I, I tempered that. And I, I just, I didn't even have to press it down. I simply had to um, accept it. I said, there you, there you are. There you are, a little bit frustrated. Um, nevertheless, carry on, Kurt. Help, help you, Miko, with the thing that she needs help with, which we did successfully complete. Um, and then uh, change gears and uh, make good use of the early evening in other ways. There will be tomorrow, if I, if I live, to uh, swim again, which is today now. And uh, I'm still around, so <laughs> maybe I'll make it to the afternoon and be able to go for a swim then. So I handled that. Not, I handled that a slight, slight feeling of emotional upset at not getting my way, not being able to fulfill the thing that I wanted you to do for not the first or the second, but the third day in a row, not by pressing it down, not by bottling it up, but I wrote it in a way, disconnecting myself from the sense of agency and free will in a way and just let it be without like I was I was like a man on a roller coaster with his arms folded you know as the roller coaster roared this way and that and up and down and not cowering my face and or holding my hands up or any or screaming out or anything like that mm -hmm. okay no swim today Okay, let's work on this, Yumiko. We'll figure this out. Okay, good. We've got it done. All right. I'm going to work on what else can I do that might be useful. And I came over and I did some reading. I think that was a more mature way to handle a derailment than anything else. Hmm. It's certainly the way I would want to handle these things, and it certainly is now the way that I am. So <laughs> I guess that's a good sign of progress, huh? What else? Um, yesterday was also the day that Joanne came over to tell me that my neighbors, Laurel and Bob, will not be coming back. Um, I've told the story uh, a time or two uh, when I'm doing these meditations, but my next, my neighbors two doors over, Bob and Laurel, married couple, um, they're not that old. Um, Bob is 70, Laurel 67. Um, they're basically, their health is wound down to an end. And we had a bit of a desperate month or two, where a month and a half, roughly, that um, they couldn't take care of themselves two doors down. And no children, no family, really, to speak of. And her friend, their friend, Joanne, and myself, and my neighbors on either side were working together to help them out, try to keep them afloat. Um, I finally gained permission of um, Laurel to call social services, which I did. Well, I engaged social service via the police who did a welfare check, sent a social worker over, and now both Bob and Laurel have been taken into, I guess it's a, I guess it's a protective custody of a sort. They're both in hospital now to attend to their medical issues, and then they'll be uh, finding their way into long-term care. They won't be coming back. I don't know what will happen to all their stuff. I still have a key, and I contacted Joanne yesterday and said, I've got a key. <laughs> You know, yeah, because they gave me a key in case someone needed to go in and to help Laurel because she had fallen a couple of times. So had Bob four times, couldn't get up. The paramedics had to be called. Their story, I think, then is in terms of the independent period of their life is now at an end. Now, it's interesting. The the good life principle that I want to talk about today is called life will not go well. It's the principle immediately after temperance and just before the principle called the horror show. Good, t good placement. Life certainly will not go well. 
It always has its troughs, doesn't it? Mm, that's a big, big hell of a trough for Bob and Laurel. One they won't come back from. I guess I'm trying to dance around it, but I'm. the thing is, they had told me all of their dreams. They had so much they wanted to do after retirement, after, they, after their independence, this decade of their life. Bob, 70-year-old Bob, had told me how they, and they have some money. They, they had dreamed of returning to the Pacific Northwest to travel, to see the world. And now all of that is at an end. I don't want to say things like they waited too long or they, they, they held off or they didn't take good care of themselves, all of which are probably true. But it does seem that way to me. Hmm. So turning the, uh, their story to my own, looking in the mirror, I want to ask myself, do I really want to continue working past the 16th of December? This, come, this year certainly will help my family to have more money coming in for a little longer until Social Security kicks in in, two, in a year and a half. Hmm. I haven't made up my mind. I guess it will all depend on how much, how costly this move really is. Yet, yet, I have plans to make use of my remaining vitality to, to make money in the, in the next phase. It, it's good that yesterday I talked to my boss and he was, I was, tell, I was reminding him that I'm leaving this year and he was reminding me that I am welcome to stay as long as I want. So, <laughs> so he says, you can, you know, he says, you don't, you don't have to leave on the 16th of December. You can, you can make it the 16th of December of the following year if you want. So that's good to know. It's good to know the door's open, right? So they're, they're not, they're not, you know, eager for me to go. Hmm. Life will not go well. I think in a way I've kind of covered that one already, haven't I? Yeah. I was going to talk about that principle because the purpose of that principle, the reason I reflect upon it every day or at least touch it and mention it is to remind myself that life will not go well. That it's folly to expect to wake up every day and think today's going to be a great day just like yesterday was and the day before and to have some sense that, uh, that we have some, some that the life owes us that or that there's some birthright to have good days. Good days are, are what they are. Bad days are also what they are. Like the tides, these should be expected. And... Um, like my missing yesterday's opportunity to swim, to be expected to happen. I reflect back that in the year 2023, although I endeavored to reach the beach once a day, I in fact made 99 visits to the beach, which would account for about a third of the time, right? It's interesting that now I'm about... Uh, I think I'm I'm, one, I'm ten days in, and I think I'm up to five days at the beach. So I'm I'm doing I should say I'm doing better than average, right? Life will not go well. Things will get in the way. I won't be able to go to the beach from time to time. I uh, will have a tough day at work. I won't uh, I won't get. I'll choose a bad flavor of ice cream at Baskin Robbins. My arthritis will kick in. My dog might get sick. All kinds of things that could go on and on. I might get dementia. And uh, the world come crashing down, as it has now for Bob and Laurel. That's basically the main reason why they've been remanded into the custody of the state. Both of them have Alzheimer's. um, And uh, neither of them can care for one another. That could await any of us or a heart attack like my father. You get the point. I don't need to belabor this one and go on and on. And Life will not go well. It's a very affirmative statement, isn't it? I'm not saying life may not go well. I'm saying life will not go well. It won't. <laughs> you don't have to live very long to find that out. Any five-year-old has already had that their share of experience of that. Where well is measured as the uh, scope and extent of where the uh, enactment of their will 
life will not go well. I think I've gone on and on enough about that one. And by the way, pardon me for the snoring dog. <laughs>